Litmus is an open source chaos engineering platform that enables teams to identify weaknesses and potential outages in infrastructures by inducing multiple chaos scenarios in a controlled way. Providing an end-to-end -end chaos engineering platform for cloud-native infrastructure and application, Litmus is designed specifically to orchestrate and analyze chaos in your environments. What started out merely as a project to test out an internal tool in 2017 became a CNCF incubating project four years later with over 350k plus Litmus installations and multiple Litmus experiment execution uh, and over 50 plus enterprises using Litmus currently. Litmus could be a choice that hopefully you would want to opt for when you think of chaos engineering. With over 50 plus experiments currently publicly available in the Litmus Chaos Hub, you get the option to target infra or non-infra uh, components in your applications. With options like targeting your pod or targeting your node, doing network chaos, stress chaos, or doing specific cloud service chaos. Or if you have a specific application chaos in mind, then also going for something like that. Litmus mainly consists of two important components and three important CRDs, which it requires to induce chaos. The chaos center is a single source of truth, maintaining all the different chaos activities that you are currently performing. And the chaos agent is nothing but the subscriber. And this subscriber helps you identify where your application resides, which application you want to target when you're thinking of chaos. It is the connector between your chaos center and your cluster where your application is sitting. The three major CRDs that we would like to know is the Chaos Experiment CR, the Chaos Engine CR, and the Chaos Result CR. The Experiment CR helps you host the blueprint of the Chaos Experiment that you want to run. The Engine CR helps you tune the experiment further. And the Chaos Result CR is where the metadata and the result of your Chaos Experiment is saved. Now there are multiple ways to install Litmus, either through using kubectl or Helm. There are multiple scopes of installation, either through namespace or cluster scope. To know all this, to get all this information, simply navigate to the litmuschaos.io website and go over to the repository or check out the docs. In the docs, there's a detailed installation section which will talk about the different modes of installation and the different tools that you can use for installing Litmus. On the repo itself, you can see the different contribution. You can also navigate to the Litmus portal directory. You can check out the platform support commands that you need to install the stable or if you want to try out the latest feature, the unstable beta version of the master. To install Litmus in your cluster, simply copy paste the command or apply the specific version you would like to install and just press enter. This would spin up the necessary services it needs to boot up and once you log in, you should have all the dependent services up and running and you should be ready to execute your chaos. Once you have successfully logged in with the default credential, which is admin and litmus, you should see a screen like this. If you face any problem with the installation, make sure you check out the installation section in the litmus docs. Quickly verify after logging in, you should have all these dependent services up and running in your cluster. Once that is done, you should be good to go. The chaos delegate or the chaos agent is where all your agents would be displayed. And by default, you should have one agent pre-connected, which is nothing but the subscriber that is sitting in your cluster. If you have two or more than two agents, all of the agents should show up here. To construct the Litmus workflow, simply click on Schedule a Workflow. Select the agent where you want the chaos to happen. Click on Next. Select the type of workflow you want to execute. It could be a choice from the predefined workflows. It could be a template. It could be from the list of Chaos Hub experiments, which you can use to create custom workflows. Or if you have an YAML already, you can just upload that. Once you have decided which type of workflow you want to go for, simply click that and choose it and click next. Provide the name and description of your workflow and click next. Here you can select the type of experiments you want in your workflow. To do that, simply click on add a new experiment, select the type of experiment you want to add, click that and select done. The experiment should be added to the left visualization. If you had two or more experiments, then you can use the edit sequence to change the sequence of the experiments and make it either serialized or parallel based on your preferences. And once you're done with it, you can click on save changes and that should be updated. To customize your experiment, simply click on this edit configuration wizard that should help you choose the name of the hub, the experiment name, the context, the type of target application you want to target, the namespace where the application is situated, the kind of the application, you have a few predefined ones set for you. 
the app label which the target application is having. To add new probes, simply click on add a new probe. You get the option to choose four different types of probes, which are HTTP, CMD, KTS, and PROM. To learn more about probes, simply go to the documentation of the probes in the concept section. Simply check the type of probes available, the different type of modes, and the syntax for the same. Once you have decided the type of probe you want to go for, select that. Select the mode of the probe. Give it certain required properties like the timeout you want to set, the interval, the retry. You can also set up polling intervals and the initial delay seconds if you want to. In case of an HTTP probe, simply give it the URL that it's supposed to query. Select the request method if it's a get or a post, the criteria and the response code. Once you have populated all the data for your probe, simply click on add probe. Your probe details should show up here and you can view the properties here. Once you're done with that, simply click on next. If you have specific tunables that you want to add to the chaos engine, you can do so from this menu up here. If you want to add custom key value pairs, you can do so from here. Once you're done, click on finish and the change should be reflected. To do an in-depth updation of the YAML, you can click on edit YAML that should give you the entire YAML and from the YAML itself, you can do modifications. And once you're done with the modification, simply click on save changes. By default, revert schedule is enabled to true, but if you want to retain all the chaos data that has happened, simply toggle it back to false. In the next step, you simply select the weights that you want to give to the experiments selected. 10 is the default one. You can of course shift it to the number of priority you want to give to the particular experiment. Select the schedule which you want the workflow to run on. By default, it's a one-time workflow, but you can also configure it to be a recurring cron workflow. And the final step is a summary of all the activities that you have done. Once you're happy with all the changes, simply click on finish and that's it. To see the running workflow, go to the chaos scenarios page, check the details of the workflow by clicking on show the workflow and you should see the Argo graph populating. Once the chaos experiment is installed and the chaos engine is triggered, the chaos workflow should start executing and within a few minutes, the chaos should happen and you should get the verdict post the workflow completion. While the workflow is happening, you can also see the status of the workflow in your cluster by simply checking the name of the workflow that you give and also the chaos engine that is being triggered. Once the workflow is finished, simply click on the chaos engine to get the chaos results. The entire chaos result would be displayed. You can scroll down and find the appropriate result you're looking for. For example, the verdict, the probe success percent, the fail step, the reason for the failed step, etc. That's it for creating workflows and executing chaos in your applications with very few simple steps.